For this video, I picked out four different multiple choice questions about progressive transverse waves that quite a few students struggle with. So starting with this one on the top left, it tells you that a wave travels in the direction m to n. It then tells you, um, by the way, how you know this is a transverse wave and not a longitudinal one is a longitudinal one often looks like a barcode. There's these lines that we call wave fronts. Sometimes they're bunched close together, sometimes they're bunched further apart. The areas where they are bunched close together, we call those areas of compression, whereas areas where they're bunched further apart is what we call areas of rarefaction. And that's separate to a transverse wave, which has peaks and troughs, just like you're used to. It tells you X marks a point on the rope, the frequency is 5 hertz, the wavelength is 1 meter, and the amplitude is 0.2, okay. Where will X be after 0.15 seconds? Well, so straight off the bat, this looks like a question that relates to time period. So the time period, if you have forgotten, is 1 over frequency. In this case, it's 1 over 5 hertz, which is 0.2 seconds. What this tells us is the time taken for one complete wavelength. The fact that it's asking where x is going to be after 0.15 seconds, well, if we compare the time, um, sorry, 0.15 to the total time in one whole wavelength, 0.2, we see that it's three quarters. That means that it moves three quarters of a wavelength in this time. Does it move three quarters of a wavelength forwards or backwards? It's actually backwards because um, a particle moves opposite to the direction of energy transfer. Of course, because it's a transverse wave, it moves perpendicular. In this case, it moves perpendicular and downwards, not perpendicular and upwards, because then it'd be going in the direction of wave transfer. But like I mentioned, it moves opposite to the direction of wave energy transfer. I feel like I'm talking too fast. <laughs> but yeah, that's one quarter of a wavelength, uh, one half of a wavelength, and three quarters of a wavelength. Sorry about the construction noise, by the way. But it ends up here. That means it's above MN by 0.2 meters, because we know the amplitude of this wave is 0.2 meters. So that would be option B. Great. Let's now move on to this question on the right. I'm going to make my pen a little bit thicker because this looks way too thin. The diagrams show displ displacement distance. I feel like this should say, okay, displacement distance graph for a wave and the displacement time graph. Okay. What is correct for the wave? The amplitude is three meters. Amplitude is the maximum positive displacement of the wave, which is 1.5 meters. If it asked for... Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's definitely incorrect. If it's sometimes students refer amplitude to the maximum positive to the maximum negative, which would be a distance of three meters, but that's a little bit different. Moving on, then the wavelength is six meters. So the wavelength is a distance between two successive peaks. And if we look at where there's two successive peaks at this point here, which is roughly 1.5 seconds, and at this point here, which is roughly 7.5 seconds, that's a difference of six seconds. But that's not really in meters, so that's incorrect. And what that is actually, that distance between the two peaks, sorry, the time between two peaks, that's the time period. So let's try that out. I feel like that might be useful. Time period equals six seconds. Because remember, time period is a time taken for one complete wavelength. Um, the wavelength, let's look at um, this graph on the left because it gives values in distances. So again, let's look from peak to peak. From 0 meters to 40 meters is one complete wavelength, which is 40 meters. So that's incorrect. The speed is 8.3. Well, oh, straight off the bat, I think D is the correct answer because we know frequency is 1 over time period. And we've done the process of finding the time period of 6. And 1 over 6, I'm just going to double check on my calculator. But I think that's 0.17. 1 over 6 is, yes, 0.17. So it's going to be D. But let's have a little talk about why it's not C. Well, the speed of a wave, um, it looks like you're going to have to find the frequency and divide it by the wavelength. Um, so, again, the frequency is 1 over 6. We calculated that in part D, actually. If you divide that by the wavelength, which, well, the distance between two successive peaks is 40 meters. I'm just going to quickly do that division. But, yeah, straight away, that looks a lot smaller than 8.3. Yeah, it gives a value of 4.2 times 10 to the minus 3, which is a lot smaller than the speed. So this is definitely incorrect. Let's now move on to this question on the bottom left. So the key thing to note here is um, try separating this into um, sections where there's equilibriums. Whenever two points are between um, two sections where there's equilibrium, like here and here, points P and Q, they're always in phase. So straight off the bat, that's what tells you the answer is actually just C. The reason why P has the same amplitude as R, even though they're at different displacements, the amplitude refers to the maximum displacement that a particle can have. P can still 
reach that peak there and still have that same amplitude that R currently has. If it instead said P has the same displacement as R, that's incorrect. They don't have the same displacement right now, but they do have the same amplitude because they both can reach the same maximum displacement, if that makes sense. Lastly, it tells you P and Q are points on a string. OP is 30 centimeters. So let's call that 0.3 meters. Okay, I'm going to change the thickness of the pen one last time because it's too thin. OQ is 0.9 meters. 0.9 meters. Um, at a certain frequency, the string vibration is first harmonic. Okay, that's the first type of stationary wave where there's two nodes and one anti node in the middle of them. Remember that when you draw a stationary wave, you not only draw that incident wave, but the one represented by a dashed line going underneath it. What is the next harmonic at which P and Q will oscillate in phase? Okay, let's have a little think about it. So, if it's initially in phase at the first harmonic, in the second harmonic, what happens? Well, you add one node and you add one anti-node. It looks sort of like this. In this case, they'll be out of phase. But then if you add another node onto it, try to think of it in terms of wavelengths. Like this is half of a wavelength. When it's a multiple of half a wavelength, again, that's when it's next in phase. Um, sorry, when it's an odd multiple of half wavelength. I'll show you what I mean by that. This here is one whole wavelength. That's not an odd multiple of a half wavelength. That's an even multiple of a half wavelength because 2 over 2 lambda is 1 lambda. If instead we draw the next harmonic, the third harmonic that is, what we'll see is that the length here represents not only one, but an extra half of a wavelength. So 1.5 wavelengths. So that's an odd multiple of a half wavelength because that's 3 over 2 wavelengths. That's when they're in phase again. So that's the third harmonic. Hopefully that made sense and all these questions do make sense because they are quite difficult. Um, yeah, if you do have any questions with them, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, be sure to like the video if it helped and subscribe. I'll post more content like this very soon.